This episode of Analog Resurgence is brought to you by Squarespace. Use the link in the description of this video or the code Analog Resurgence to get 10% off your first purchase at Squarespace. Fuji isn't the most popular company in the film photography world. What with their love for discontinuing things like uh, PacFilm and Pro 400H and various slide film stocks. They do, however, make Instax film. And Instax film is a very consistent and quality made instant film that I like a lot. But I've also held the very popular opinion in this community that Instax as a format is just somewhat held back by the cameras that are available to shoot it. Fuji's Instax cameras are essentially just point and shoots. Plastic bodies, very few features, super easy to use, and that's not a bad thing, especially because it has helped Instax have such a wide appeal. The task of taking full advantage of Instax has fallen to others, but one of the best choices out there for pushing the limits of what's possible on Instax is the Lomo Graphlock 4x5 camera back from Lomography. This is a fully functional Instax back for 4x5 cameras that takes Instax wide film, meaning that you can shoot Instax in a fully manual camera that will allow for different lenses, exposure control, and none of the restrictions that you'll encounter when using the Fuji Instax wide camera. I'm a little late to the game on this one because the Lomo Graph Log came out last year and was quite popular when it did, but recently Tony from over on my Patreon actually sent me one of these back, so I really wanted to take a look at it. Huge thank you, Tony. And I just did a video on like the basics of 4x5, so if you want to know more about large format, then go check out that video. The Lomo Graph Log is an Instax wide back that's compatible with large format cameras that have a graph lock back. Graph lock backs are the standard for most 4x5 cameras, and they have been for decades at this point. It's just these two sliding locks on the back of the camera that allow you to mount a variety of different film holders to the camera itself. The Lomo Graph Lock comes with a plastic spacer for framing with the ground glass on your camera and the unit itself, which contains a motor for ejecting the Instax film. It takes four AA batteries for powering the motor, which just go into the bottom, and then the unit is pretty much ready to go. There's a metal dark slide to protect film from exposure when it's off the camera and when you're switching backs, and there's a switch on the side, which will lock the dark slide into place. The switch is also the on-off switch for the motor. You can only eject the image when the dark slide is unlocked. You also have a little blue light to indicate when it's on. Below that is the film eject button, and pushing this once will fully eject the next shot in your Instax pack. There's also a film counter so that you know what shot you're on in the pack. The back itself has a pretty solid build quality to it as well. Good plastic and a nice soft cover over most of it. Usually I kind of associate Lomography with a lot of like plasticky, not great looking cameras and lenses that they put out. So it's nice to see that this has a nice quality to it. And it meshes well with 4x5 stuff, which in general is much older and usually made of very very nice quality metal components and everything, but this looks good on the back of a camera when you're actually using it. It's easy to get started because Instax film is very simple to load. Just put the cartridge in and line up the yellow marker as though you were loading any Instax camera, but then things become more of a process, as is the case with large format stuff in general. I'm using my Crown Graphic Press camera, and before shooting with the back, it's important to determine new infinity markers for this specific film holder. It sits further back than a standard 4x5 sheet film holder, so using the spacer with the ground glass and focusing to infinity, I've I've marked a new point on the rails for where my lens needs to sit. Now I know that with the rails in all the way and my lens at this point, I'm focused to infinity. The spacer is pretty wide, but many 4x5 cameras have a spring back on them and you can just insert this plastic guide between the body and the ground glass. This lets you properly compose your shots because the size of an Instax frame is smaller than a 4x5 sheet of film. With the camera set up and your frame composed and focused using the spacer for the ground glass, you then remove the spacer and ground glass and put on the Lomo Graph Lock back itself. Instax wide film is an 800 ISO film, which is awesome because normally shooting 800 ISO color on a 4x5 camera would cost you a lot of money. I mean, it's different, of course, between the quality of color negative sheet film and instant film, but it's still a fun option. Set your shutter speed and aperture based on your light meter reading, remove the dark slide, fire the shutter, and then just eject your image to see it develop.
So far, my biggest learning curve with this is nailing the exposure of Instax film. Instant film isn't going to have the biggest range when it comes to a good exposure, and Instax has a pretty hard contrast to it that makes it very easy to lose information in the highlights and the shadows. Especially for trying to preserve the brighter areas in this scene, I was starting to kind of underexpose just a bit and maybe shoot it as a 1000 ISO even instead. It's tricky, but it's fun to play with, and especially because Instax wide film is so cheap in comparison to regular 4x5 sheet film or Polaroid instant film and especially expired pack film, the stakes are pretty low when I'm using this back and I love that. I don't feel bad about trying a few different shots of the same scene with a different exposure to see what works best on the film, and that's a really big plus for it. It's a learning process, as is most things with film. The back opens up a lot of options for Instax wide film, especially depending on the 4x5 camera and the lenses that you might have. Double exposure, long exposure, things that you can't easily do with the format, or at least things that you can't easily do on the cameras that are normally available for the format. The film maybe isn't for everyone. I tend to find it's a pretty cool image in terms of the colors, very greens and blues. But hey, you could play with a warming filter or just a variety of different things in order to change the look of the film, or you could also just shoot black and white Instax wide as well. Also, Instax is better suited for a back like this than Polaroid Integral film is because of the way that Instax film works. Instax film is exposed through the back of the actual image, and then when we eject it and look at the front of it, it's properly oriented. Polaroid SX70 and 600 film is exposed directly on the front of the film in cameras that usually have a mirror inside of them. If you were to shoot Polaroid in a back like this, and I've made one in the past, then those images come out inverted because there's no mirror to properly flip the image when it's exposing. And as I said, Instax wide film is just so cheap and so easy to find in comparison to the Polaroid stuff. In the past, there existed large format instant film to be used in large format cameras, but those film types are all gone now, which sucks a lot but at least a very solidly put together Instax wide back exists for being able to shoot an instant film in these cameras at all. It isn't the same thing as like FP100 C45 or Polaroid type 59, but it's something. My only real note for this back is as I was using it on my Graflex and ejecting photos, they angle so much when they were coming out that they were hitting part of the camera. They can get caught or bent pretty easily if you don't keep an eye on that, and that would definitely damage the photo. It's not going to be like that on all cameras, and I mean I could mount the back upside down instead, but it's something to be aware of. I believe this is the most professionally assembled Instax wide back for large format cameras. Lomography sells these for 175 American dollars, and I do think that's a fair enough price for like the quality and what it is. There's also the stuff from Lo-Fi and DIY on eBay that I'll link to. I've previously looked at the Instax back that he makes. It's also quite nice. It is 3D printed though, so it might not be to everyone's liking. It's also a little finicky for ejecting where you have to hold the button down, but if you hold it too long, then it will continue ejecting the next photo as well. I have that back on an old Polaroid roll film land camera, but he does offer it for a few different options. Brooklyn Film Camera also offers an alternative to the spacer. It's a focusing screen that is the same thickness, so you don't have to use the spacer or even your ground glass. This is done by Camera Dactyl, who makes a very cool variety of large format cameras, accessories, 3D printed stuff, and I'll throw a link to that below as well. This thing gets a thumbs up from me, and if you've got a press camera like this, then you can also just go handheld with these shots as well. Uh, oh, um, yeah, uh, I thought I did this last week. Um, listen, I'm not really doing video stuff today, but uh, you know what? If you want to make a website, then make a website using Squarespace. I know what it is, you know what it is, so let's stop pretending like we don't both know what it is. Squarespace is great for making websites if you don't know how to make a website, which applies to a lot of people because, you know, people want to put stuff online and have stuff that other people can see. So Squarespace has all the different templates and great support and everything that you would need in order to make a website, regardless of whether or not you know how to make a website, or even if you really need to make a website. It's so easy that you may as well make one, even if you don't need to make one. Squarespace. Use the link in the description of this video or use the code Analog Resurgence at checkout in order to get 10% off your first purchase at Squarespace.
Thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, and especially thank you to Tony for actually sending me one of these backs. It was really fun to play with and I can't wait to just use it more and have it available as another option for shooting 4x5 on this camera. Speaking of the Patreon, you can find ways to support the channel through links in the description below, uh, as well as some different things that I mentioned in this video, like the Brooklyn film camera stuff and like the lo-fi DIY eBay store. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.